Alicia, for more on this, we're joined now by a Republican congressman from Texas, a member of the House Financial Services Committee, Lance Gooden. Congressman, thank you for taking time on Saturday. I want to get to that fiery speech that President Biden gave on Thursday. But, but first, your reaction to these jobs numbers. And as you heard from Lucas's great reporting, the president saying that maybe inflation is going down. Well, first of all, these jobs numbers are totally outweighed by the cost of living increases that Americans are facing each and every day. And a lot of these jobs numbers are second jobs because many of my constituents and people across the United States are having to get second jobs, come out of retirement and start back to work because they cannot afford to live. They can't afford the gas prices. They can't afford food costs. They can't afford everyday uh, electricity costs. And so I think these numbers are a bit deceiving. Uh, but as to President Biden's uh, comment that inflation may be turning around, I'm probably not going to take his word for it. You're on the House Financial Services Committee. When we looked at that chart we just showed our viewers, many may be confused to see that we added over 300,000 jobs, but yet unemployment went up 0.2 percent from July. What do you make of that? You know, it, it, these numbers that are coming out of our federal government, I don't really trust many of them, and I know that this administration will spend whatever does come out. But again, many of these job numbers are second jobs. They are underreporting uh, the impact on inflation. Uh, they are refusing to mention it in things like the speech that we are about to talk about, I believe. This administration refuses to recognize that we are in a perilous time, and the American people's pocketbooks are not what they were when President Trump left office. And I believe that they're frustrated and that they will. Uh, the other side will pay a price price at the polls come December. Let's get to that fiery speech. Great segue. Thank you, Congressman. I'll get you right to it. Your reaction, because on Inauguration Day and, and on the campaign trail, candidate Biden and then newly sworn in President Biden was a president for unity and didn't want to pit red states against blue states. Now this speech is quite a contrast to those original pledges. Yes, sir. The, the Biden administration, again, they're distracting from their horrible policies. Uh, but what we saw a few nights ago was unprecedented. We saw a president that has united Republicans for President Donald Trump, united them against this administration. And do you remember the days of the Trump White House when people kept saying, I wish he would move on and forget about Hillary Clinton? Why does he keep talking about Hillary Clinton? We're seeing this now with President Biden. He can't seem to move past Donald Trump. He is very much uh, worried, afraid, scared, I don't know the word, uh, about uh, paranoid, perhaps, about Donald Trump running for office again. He has weaponized the Justice Department against our former president. And at this point in time, I think he's lost so much credibility that the American people are just ready to move forward. But seeing this speech a few nights ago, it's where he is actually criticizing members of the Republican Party uh, for wanting to make America great again, is, is strange you, to You me. raise an interesting point, Congressman, because you're talking about President Biden seems to keep going back to talking about his predecessor, Donald Trump. Is it your opinion, then, that President Biden and Democrats have decided to make Donald Trump their uh, party? Part of their campaign is a referendum on Donald Trump in the midterms, even though former President Trump's not on the ballot. I think they'd like that. You know, we've seen since uh, Donald Trump left office this obsession uh, with him on the other side by Democrats. Liz Cheney, who I classify as a Democrat, has said that it's her mission uh, to prevent Donald Trump from being in the White House. And so this obsession has lived on throughout this Congress. And I also think the other side welcomes a discussion about Donald Trump, because anytime we're talking about Donald Trump, we're not talking about inflation. We're not talking about this horrible summer where people could not afford to take their summer vacations and that Yes, the gas prices are down now, but it's because no one has bought gas all summer to take their travels that they were accustomed to. I think we're distracting uh, from the high levels of crime in our urban areas. And the Democrats that I work with and across the nation want to do anything but talk mm -hmm. about their failed record, about the open border uh, that's ruining our nation. And so I think if they yep. can talk about Donald Trump, this is what they perceive to be a win for them. We'll see if it's a winning strategy come the midterms in just under two months. Congressman Lance Gooden, thank you for taking time. Thank you. Alicia? Subscribe to the Fox News YouTube channel to catch our nightly opens, stories that are changing the world and changing your life. I'm Tucker Carlson tonight.